What's up YouTube? Jeff back again from HighOnAndroid.com and today we're going to get into the Samsung Galaxy S6 Active official full review. So this full review is going to be quite a bit shorter than the other full reviews I've done or will do because the Galaxy S6 Active of course is very similar to two other phones which I've already taken a look at and that of course being the regular Galaxy S6 which I have right here sapphire black and also the galaxy s6 edge which i also have right here in sapphire black so i've already talked about these two phones and of course the regular s6 active has a lot in common with both of them so for that reason i'm not going to talk quite as much in this review about the s6 active because a lot of the things are in common so i'm going to tell you what is different about the s6 active is it better or worse than each of these phones and I'm going to give you a breakdown of who I think each of these phones is for in terms of an overall consumer. The Galaxy S6 Active, the regular S6, and the S6 Edge. Which phone should you buy depending on what it is that you're looking for out of your particular smartphone? So let's get right into it. First of all, one thing I don't like about the Galaxy S6 Active is, well, you can see right here on the packaging, this is an exclusive phone in the U.S. to the AT&T carrier which is annoying if you're on Verizon, Sprint, or T-Mobile, or some other carrier. You can't get this phone. You can't get it unlocked. So that, of course, is a major downfall right from the beginning. Thankfully, I have multiple lines, so I was able to pick one up myself. But if you're only on one carrier and you use one phone, like most people, that's going to deter you. So that's one thing I don't like right away. That's a negative for the Galaxy S6 Active. Next, the next thing that is a huge plus for the Galaxy S6 Active is the battery. That's probably the number one great thing about getting this phone. Now, the regular S6 and the S6 Edge, both of these phones have amazing screens. They both have, you know, a beautiful, sleek look. But that also means, because they're so thin, that they have this tiny battery inside. Lots of people have complained about the battery life on both of these phones. On the other hand, you add a tiny bit of thickness. I showed this in my unboxing video. But if you take a look at the regular S6 and the Galaxy S6 Active, the thickness is really pretty negligible. Now given it doesn't have the sexy metal along the sides, that's one thing some people are going to say, yeah, I don't like that. Well, okay, but the thickness itself is pretty negligible. It's a little bit taller, but just a little bit thicker as well. Now obviously, if you compare it to the S6 Edge, you can see the S6 Edge, because it has the Edge screen on the side, it's a little bit thinner indeed. It's quite a bit thinner than the S6 Active. But still, you're getting a 3,500 milliamp hour battery. Now, some people pointed out in the S6 Active unboxing, I said 35,000 milliamp hours. Obviously, I meant 3,500 milliamp hours. 35,000 milliamp hours would be a huge battery for a phone. I think it'd be a little bit thicker than this. But this battery is fantastic, actually. And in my testing, I've gotten just amazing battery life out of this phone. I actually just charged it up before I started the review because I just went about two and a half days with this phone uh, and just using it. Uh, and it, I get about seven and a half to eight hours of screen on time using this phone for videos, social media, um, posting with WordPress to the high on Android site, reading news, using Google Keep, tracking packages, downloading apps, pretty much anything you could do with your phone. And I get seven and a half to eight hours. Now that's impressive. And for the average user, that's probably going to translate to two to three full days of use, no problem, without needing to recharge. Can anyone say that about the S6 or the S6 Edge? Absolutely not. So right away, if you love good battery life, this phone is amazing for the battery life. All right, so the next thing that I really, really, really like about the Galaxy S6 Active is that even though it's a little thicker than both of these phones, which I just showed, it also has this rugged exterior. So you can see here on the back, it's got this hard shell and a casing around the side here so that you've got the dust proof, the water resistant, the shock resistant. This thing has got a nice casing that's going to protect you from any sort of bumps, bruises, shocks, or a little bit of water. And that's great because what that means is you don't need to put a case on this phone. I actually have not bought a case for the S6 Active during the time I was reviewing it, I wanted to use it without a case, throw it around like I would my normal phones, come in, throw it on the desk, 
you know, throw it in my cup holder on the car. Normally I'm really careful with these phones because I feel like I'm gonna scratch up the glass or the metal. So I have cases on them at all times. I just took them off so I could give you guys the size comparison. But I do not need a case with this phone. And if you look at it, actually, this phone is still in perfect shape. I really, there are no scratches on the phone, the little fingerprints there, but no scratches on the phone on either side or the back. So nothing on the back at all. I don't see a single mark on the back of the phone, the sides or the bottom. And I haven't used a case at all. I actually took this phone up to Sedona this weekend. Uh, my fiance and I went to a friend's wedding up there and it got dirty. Uh, there's a bunch of red clay up there. You know, we were outdoors. We had to walk a little bit to get to the wedding. Sedona's really sort of secluded area back there. I got this phone wet. I took it to the gym, sweat all over the phone, using it with my Bluetooth headphones. No problem. Still got beast mode battery life with the S6 Active, even when using Bluetooth headphones for an hour, hour and a half in the gym. And in addition, with the water, no problems at all. So I even tried dunking this thing uh, in some water while I was taking the shower. I took it in the shower for a moment just to see how it would do. I'm not gonna shower the whole time with the phone, but took it in there for a few minutes just to see how it would do with the water. No problems so far, haven't had any issues. Now obviously, if you submerge it under really deep water for a long time, that's a terrible idea. It's not going to do that. It's water resistant, not waterproof. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about on this phone is the active button. So the active button is another change from the regular S6 and the S6 Edge. So if you look here on the regular S6, you've got your volume buttons right there, and then you have nothing else on that side of the phone. On the active, the same thing here on the S6 Edge, you've got your volume buttons right there and nothing else. But on the active, you've got this blue button, and when you press this blue button, you can set it to do something with an app, so here I've set it to activate Hangouts when I do a single press. I showed you guys this in the unboxing. And it opens up my Hangouts conversations. And then if I long press it, it opens up my Messenger. So I use Facebook Messenger a lot. I had it set to YouTube before, but now I can long press and get right into my Facebook Messenger. So that's really, really useful because I know we're not supposed to, but sometimes when you're sitting at a stoplight and you need to check an email really quick and just glance at your phone, you wanna open up a messaging app or an email app right away, see what's going on, you tap this, it opens it up, right from the lock screen even, you can get in there and check that message before you even have to start driving. Now obviously don't use your phone while you're driving, but if you have to check a message at the light, it is what it is. All right, so that's the next thing that I really like. The active button is awesome. I find myself using it a lot to launch the apps. It's a really useful way. And yes, having a hardware key is important when you're doing things like working out. The next thing that's kind of a little bit annoying about the S6 Active, but I've actually gotten used to it, is you notice you've got hard keys here on the bottom part of the phone. So your home button, your open your, your apps button, so this gives you all your apps, and then your back button, they're all hard keys, as you can see there at the bottom. That's different, of course, than your S6 Edge, which has just got the single home key and you've got your capacitive buttons there on either side. And the same thing as well with the regular S6. You've got your home button and you've got capacitive buttons here. Let me open with my fingerprint scanner. You've got capacitive buttons at the bottom to open up your apps list and also your back button. So you can see that that's a major difference. Having these physical buttons on the bottom can be a little annoying if you're used to the capacitive buttons, but to be honest, after using it for a few weeks, I got used to it. And since you have a physical home button on the other two anyway, the only thing to get used to is the back button and the apps button. And I was able to get used to that, no problem. So even though it's a little bit of a minor annoyance, I kind of prefer the physical home button and then the capacitive buttons uh, on the regular S6 and S6 Edge, but it's not that difficult to get used to it on here. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to mention is the other thing you lose, of course, dealing with the home button is on the regular S6, I can put my finger right here and open my phone, my fingerprint, because we've got a fingerprint scanner on here. There is no fingerprint scanner on the S6 Active. So of course that has to do with the fact that we want this thing to be rugged and we want to be able to throw it around. So obviously the physical buttons lend themselves better to shock resistance and you know not breaking and all this other stuff. Plus, at the end of the day, if you're using this phone a lot, doing active type stuff, 
you may not even have time to be putting your finger. Sometimes the scanners don't work on the regular S6 or S6 Edge. It might be better to have a physical button you just swipe to open and keep going. So even though I like the fingerprint scanner, I didn't find that to be a huge problem. Uh, the last thing that's a little worse about the S6 Active is the speakers on the back, so you can see there. I tried listening to some YouTube videos, some music, and overall, the sound is not as good because on the regular S6, you got the speaker on the bottom. So of course, that's a little bit worse. But overall, that's not a huge problem. You're probably gonna be using headphones a lot if you're using this as an active phone. So yeah, the sound quality is not as good, but of course, it's not the biggest problem in the world. Uh, overall, I think, in my opinion, if you want a phone that is great battery life with uh, raw power and also gives you protection without needing a case, because this phone doesn't need a case, so you're still getting that slimness and you don't need a case, I think the S6 Active is actually my favorite of the three Samsung phones. So if I were going to buy one of these, if I only could use one, I would probably use the S6 Active over the edge or over the regular S6. And that's because I value really great battery life over the beautiful aesthetics of the other two phones. It's great to have a beautiful phone made of glass and metal and all those things, but I would rather have the great battery life and everything else is the same. The camera is still awesome. The screen is still beautiful. You still got the Super AMOLED screen. You can, of course, I don't really love TouchWiz, but you can throw Nova Launcher on here, which I've done. You can see I've got Nova on there still. Overall, everything is the same as it is on the S6 and the S6 Edge, except you don't get the beautiful metal sides around everything, and you get a much bigger battery, but all of the other features are the same. You get the same software, the same amazing camera, still takes the same great pictures. I compared them to the other phones. They're still fantastic. You do lose your fingerprint scanner, but that's not a big deal to me. I think it comes down to, do you care about getting a lot done with your phone? Do you use it a lot? Do you need a big battery? This is the phone to go with. And again, it's still gonna be slimmer than the other two phones if you put a case on it. I showed that in the unboxing. Go check it out if you haven't seen it. Overall, this is my pick. It's the phone that works best for me. If you're a power user, you need good battery life, and you still want all the other features, I'd go with this one. If you feel like you have to have the sexy phone with the amazing uh, features of the fingerprint scanner and the beautiful glass back, you got to go with the S6 or the S6 Edge. The S6 Edge, I mean, just looks more futuristic, looks cool overall, has the wow factor. So it just depends on which of those things you want. So overall, I would get the S6 Active, uh, but that's me. I've sort of summed up the points of all of them. I'm going to end the video there. Please like the video if you enjoy the content. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, check out my social media links below. Follow me on Google Plus and Twitter. And I will see you guys in the next video.